Assalamu alaikum everyone this is your host Vishal Shake here last time we did a video on shifting scholarship which for which we have uh, gotten a lot of praise from our audience uh, we have received so many dms that what other types of scholarship we can aim for and i must confess here that despite the fact that we are very uh, uh, much on the bad mouth kind of a side when it comes to the west but again we are looking out for all the scholarships that they offer because they are the ones who are contributing the most in the education sector so today we are going to talk about Fulbright Scholarship with Mia Saab and we'll see that how we can apply it for the Fulbright Scholarship, what kind of accommodations or the principles we uh, require to apply for it and what uh, are the parameters that we need to look for. So let's just go to Mia Saab and see uh, what is Fulbright. Assalamu alaikum Mia Saab. Mia yes, Saab's evening scholarship uh, video has received a lot of praise from our audience and they were very thankful to you of course uh, for pinpointing out the nitty gritties that are involved in obtaining the or at least try to attempt to obtain the uh, Shivning Scholarship. Now on the last two days we are working on Fulbright Scholarship so I would really uh, appreciate that if you can divulge into the uh, introduction and the nitty gritties of the Fulbright Scholarship. Vishal, before I start the most important thing is we the Pakistanis criticize the most the West. Mm -hmm. Ke they have some hidden agendas or stuff like that but when you look around in the field of knowledge or education, they are the ones who contribute the most. Like we did last time the Shevning Scholarship, which was sponsored by the British government. Today we are going to discuss about a scholarship which started way back in 1946 by William Fulbright. This is a scholarship which is considered like a holy grail in the field of education, the most meritorious the most competitive and the most shining scholarship among all the scholarship. That is a full price. My aim is to highlight about these scholarship is that all those people who are very intelligent, who are very hardworking, who want to see the world, who want to learn a lot and who want to contribute back to the education or knowledge. They should must know about the uh, facilities of these scholarships so that they can apply rather than aiming or thinking within their mind oh we don't have the money we don't have the resources to go abroad to study or have a multicultural experience for that reason like Shevning this scholarship is very competitive mm -hmm. and I want to make a very good clarification here that it is not like that you have a deadline this year and you are targeting or aiming to apply for Fulbright this year. That's not how it works. Okay, it has, uh, I remember in Shivning you had to comply with the timelines, right? It, it, not even the timelines. You always target a scholarship one year yes. ahead. Yes. Because it's, these are the scholarships which are very competitive scholarships. Okay. I mean like Fulbright, if I can, uh, I think that I can apply this year for Fulbright scholarship and I'm going to enroll in a university this year, that's not going to happen. Okay. You have to apply one year ahead okay. and there are certain requirements for that. The most important thing is when it comes to Fulbright, on the screen you will, uh, you know, the website will pop out in front of you. The website you can see on the, on the screen is the United States Educational Foundation in Pakistan. All the information regarding the Fulbright is available here. You will find it here. Achha. Most of the time, agar, uh, if you look at the statical, statistical analysis of the scholarships or the Fulbrights granted, previously in Pakistan, there is a rule which is said that, that you must fall in a STEM. Either okay. your discourse must be science, technology, engineering and maths, as well. and maths as well. But there are many students in Pakistan who had secured the Fulbright scholarship in law degree as well okay. when it comes to your master because it's a post-study uh, uh, grants. Okay. Post-graduation uh, programs. Post-graduation programs. Okay. So you will find many Fulbright scholars who have done their LLM from Columbia, from Yale, from Harvard. Like Shevne, everything is funded. Okay. Your tuition fees, your grants, your books, your living, your stipend, your health insurance, everything is funded by the 
United States government. Okay. So there is a procedure that you apply to the universities and if the universities are willing to take you as their students, then you apply for the scholarship. But the most important thing which I highlighted in the Shavening scholarship, same applies it here. There are almost four and five fundamentals which you have to focus on to procure a Fulbright scholarship. And that is number one, why you need a Fulbright scholarship? What are your research goals? What work have you done so far? Now, how will it benefit you and your country by Brit American government to invest on you? Okay. How did you achieve what you have so far achieved? And the most important is why the American government invest on you? So this is the most critical thing, critical thing which you need to focus on. Why? I mean, the, the Gora people, the American people, they're living there. Why would be they calling someone from Pakistan to come here in United States and goes to the universities, best and the brightest universities like Harvard, Stanford, Columbia, Yale, and they invest on you. So you need to highlight these things in your application, whether you're applying for your, you know, university admission or your Fulbright scholarship. But there are certain requirements which you need to fulfill is you need to have filed file your application before these universities. You have to clear your GRE test. You have to clear your TOEFL test, which is a language test. Mm -hmm. You have to get your uh, reference letters. You have to write your statement of purpose. You have to have your all transcripts properly attested by higher, higher education commission of Pakistan. So you need to have all these documents to apply for Fulbright or all those these scholarships which comes under the umbrella of Fulbright or the grants and comes under the uh, Fulbrighter, they time to time keep popping on the website I have already mentioned. So you must be looking the, or looking on the these, these always this updated notifications for notification on these websites so that you can apply. Sir, a moment ago you mentioned the lookout for the application that why the American government should uh, invest on you and I really admire the American model because they don't beat around the bush and did the, just cut to the chase. So how would you elaborate on the matter that why and how should we write about the statement that why someone should invest on you, especially the US government. They are very peculiar about it that they don't invest a single penny uh, unless they are getting something out of it. Obviously, it's the contribution back to the knowledge. Yes. Just imagine, I mean, if you look at the biggest companies around the world, majority of the Indians are sitting over there. Why? Because they, through their skill, with their knowledge, with their experience, are contributing back to their country. US is not like, uh, they are not uh, per se superpower of the world. They capitalize on the knowledge and, you know, wisdom of the other nations and they benefit it out of it. So Apple, look at the companies, Apple, Tesla, majority of these, uh, you know, the higher positions are held by the, you know, some people from the subcontinent. So that's why you need to show that how you're going to contribute back to the knowledge. That's the main element. Okay. It's not about they have some ag hidden agendas that are what you are going to do back into your country. Not like that. Their main concern is because they take the benefit as a community as a whole. Mm. Or to be very honest, if I have to go religiously, so this is basically Islamic principle that how and in what capacity, under what manner of circumstances, you are beneficial for the society at a large. Hmm. They don't, Islamic principle is not thinking about on individuality. Okay. It talks about society, community, community yes. at large. So for that reason, you need to show that you have the urge, you have the courage, you have the crave, you have the thrust to be what you want to be and that is only possible if you get to have the experience of those best of the best universities, their libraries and most importantly, Vishal, when you are there, just imagine people from across the world are there. I mean, the multi, cultural, multi diversity, cul yes. cultural diversity, equality and the, you know, the process of learning from the different brain is something that is the most sacred experience one can have. So, is wajah se, for that reason, all of the lawyers who intend to pursue their postgraduate must rigorously 
very hardworkingly pursue this application it's totally free of cost it's not going to cost you a dime all it cost is your knowledge again like shivani this scholarship is also not for potato couch okay sir so i would uh, before ending this video i would ask a very interesting question and i believe that it would be the most anticipatory question from my part because i believe that many our students would ask this question in the comment box and that would be whether we should opt for the shivning or we should opt for the full bright <laughs> or am i comparing apples with oranges here no you certainly not a free study anywhere in the world is like uh, you know a food coming all the way from heaven be that it's your shivning in uk or full bright in america but in all eventualities i would definitely prefer full bright okay because of the kind of experience you will have they have a big economy they have big they are big country and they are so diverse in terms of uh, you know uh, diverse in terms of cultures social norms educational experiences and research so that's why i would prefer Okay, if I have the opportunity, I will definitely go. And I go. believe that it's it has become now cliche to get education from you. Can we rarely see someone who has taken mm-hmm. like post graduation or any kind of education in law from US uh, sector? So, do you believe that if you have a choice, then we should definitely prefer Fulbright over Shivning? Vishal, the issue is that we have our uh, usually don't long have a choice. Lost, long lost <laughs> love for the colonial empire. Yes, <laughs> that's why we prefer to go Imperial College, King's yes, College, yes. Cambridge, Oxford. Otherwise, if somebody needs my advice, I would definitely, and I keep telling my students who come to me for any advice, go target US. US, US. They are very good in research. Sir, thank you so much. Thank, thank you to our audience pro for watching this video, and I believe that this video would help all the. full bright aspirants to look out for the fundamentals that they require for applying for the full bright we'll keep coming with more such videos we shall hear one more thing so we have covered uk yes we have covered usa now i will take you in the next video to rasmus mundus in europe sir thank you so much and i believe our, our audience i would also be thanking you very much because we can't get enough of the knowledge uh, and mia sahib is always on the go ke Uh, i need to provide this uh, knowledge to my audience and we are very thankful to uh, the audience themselves who are very uh, curiously and eagerly uh, asking questions in the comment box and they have shown this uh, interest on these kind of videos so stay tuned for the next video and i believe that we'll come with more such informative videos for you and if you have any other question regarding fulbright or shivning please feel free to drop down the question in the comment box thank you so much